hope you're all doing well. Today, I'm going to show you what I've been up to. Eric and I have been really busy. We have been preserving, making tomato sauces. Our winter is not that far away, so with the fall coming in and the harvest, now is a great time to start maybe putting some stuff away in your home. This way you have this food already when winter comes along. A good way to spend less money during the week. You don't have to do as much groceries and it's just something fun to do. And another thing is that you know what goes in your food. So what I started to do was making some tomato sauces, which I'm going to show you later. I'm not done with. I just basically started. Here, I'll tell you what I have left. There we go. I have four cases of tomatoes that I have to still do. Uh, these tomatoes are beautiful. I'm going to show you how big they are. Show you how big they are. Look at the size of these tomatoes. We got these at the market. They weren't cheap. They were $28. But you know what? You get a lot of tomatoes for $28. I don't have a huge farm. The stuff that I did grow at the country, unfortunately, because of my what happened to my mother-in-law, we didn't get a chance to go and to take care of the gardens. Most of it was destroyed. Uh, we do have some squashes, like I mentioned, some kabuka squashes that were growing, and hopefully, you know, the animals left us some to eat. <laughs> but we got these beautiful tomatoes, and this is what I'm using to make my sauce with. Now these, we only paid like $10 the whole box, which is fantastic can get a better deal than this. Uh, so this is what I'm using to make my tomato sauces. There's also bigger ones that we got in the market, which is down here. I'm not sure if you can see them. I can't lift it right now. But that's what we're doing. We're jarring tomatoes. And I made some sun-dried tomatoes, which I'm gonna show you. Now, I didn't make a lot of sun-dried tomatoes because I have to dig out my dehydrator that's in the garage, but right now I have a lot of COVID food in there. <laughs> food that I stored away because of the COVID. So my dehydrator is in the back of that. So I've been using my stove, which has dehydrate here. Let me show you. It has dehydrate right on my stove, which really makes my life easy. But it still takes a long time. I'm not sun drying them, I'm dehydrating them, which still works. The flavors are different, but it still works. But I did do some, I'm gonna show you. And you say, well, why are you dehydrating tomatoes? Well, there's so many different things you can do with sun-dried tomatoes or dry tomatoes. Uh, for instance, if you're making a spaghetti sauce and you need to thicken it up a little, you take a couple of these, just take some of your sauce, add some of these, blitz it up in a blender, put it back in your sauce, and you've got a thicker sauce. You could also use them to put in dishes like the one that I showed you, the recipe, my scones. I put some sun-dried tomatoes. These are so sweet, they're like candy right now. And they're still a little pliable. They're not completely dry when you, I mean, they're, the moisture is gone, I can squeeze all I want, and the water is gone from them. But they're still pliable. So I'm gonna take these and just drop them in a bowl. Whoa, there goes that one. And I'm gonna preserve these for whatever dish I'm using. You could put these in salads. This one got a little, over dry. Just gonna squish them down a bit because it makes it easier. Okay guys, sorry, I got a phone call from my daughter. She is starting homeschooling for her kids. So that was exciting and it was recess time. So she called to see how I was doing and I was excited to talk to her. Okay, so here's all the uh, sun-dried tomatoes I made. It wasn't a big batch, but if you figure that every two of these is one tomato, I got quite a few in here. So we're going to just dump everything in this bowl and what I'm going to do is simply oil them a bit. It's just going to help them preserve better and yeah, but you don't have to. Once they're really dehydrated, uh, if there's no moisture whatsoever left, you can just put them in the fridge this way. But I'm going to do them the way I buy them. When I buy them, they have a coating of oil and they have a little bit of salt it just I guess it just helps preserve them a little so just a little bit of salt and when you add these two 
a meal that little bit of salt really won't make a difference now I can coat these with just olive oil but what happens you know what happens when you put olive oil in the fridge right it congeals so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix I'm gonna put a little bit of my sunflower oil and if I need more I will add and a little bit of olive oil Now, a lot of people are going to tell me, you know what, Connie, I don't have a dehydrator. My stove doesn't dehydrate. You know, I can't do that. I wish I could do it, but I can't do it. But if you wait after I show you this, I am going to show you something else that I do. And it's another way to preserve tomatoes. So you want to make sure you cut, coat these nicely that it goes in and out of your tomato. And then we're just going to slip them into a jar. Yeah, you just want to make sure that every part of it is coated. There we go. And we're going to put just a little extra salt. You know, salt also helps preserve. And that's it. So that's how easy it is to preserve some tomatoes. So I'm just gonna jam these in a jar. Okay. There we go. In it goes. And you wanna pack these. So you wanna press them down and as you need them, you pull them up. Now, if you make them super dehydrated, Hold on, let me just press in. If you make them super dehydrated, then you can um, just put them in a Mylar bag. Wasn't that easy? I can't get any more in this jar. So, And we're going to close it up. So there is my sun-dried tomatoes and I can't even tell you how many I have because every two halves is a whole tomato that I put in yours. So it's a great way to preserve tomatoes and have very little space that you need. Can you leave these out of the refrigerator? You can. Even the ones I've bought, I've left them out of the refrigerator. What happens is after a while they start getting like almost black so you don't want that. If you're going to do sun-dried tomatoes, I say you do need to refrigerate them. So if you don't have a lot of fr uh, fridge space, I say don't make a lot, but make some because it's a lot cheaper, especially now during this time when you could get tomatoes for so cheap at the market. Now's the time to do it because sun-dried tomatoes could get very costly, especially if you go to a regular grocery store. Where I get it, there's a place in Montreal called Aubu. I can get sun-dried tomatoes for very cheap. But if you're not in Montreal and you're going, going to a grocery store, sun-dried tomatoes can cost a pretty penny. So like I said, that case that I have of tomatoes only cost me $9, well $10, $9.99. So I can make a lot of sun-dried tomatoes if I want. Very easy to do and perfect thing to put away for the winter. This is going to go a long way. So I'm just going to push this aside and I'm going to show you another way of of preserving tomatoes okay so another way of doing it is by doing just by roasting your tomatoes you can just take them and simply roast them in either a cast iron pan or whatever pan you have let me just so we're gonna cut these in halves I don't mind the little pits because they're washed so I don't mind taking uh, keeping these but if that bothers you, I say remove it. But I don't mind, so I am going to just cut them and lay them down. You want to preheat your oven at 450. If your oven's like crazy at 450, I say do 400. I find that my happy spot is 450 on my stove. That's how I always do them. So I'm going to do a couple of these cast iron pans. 
And this is another way you can preserve them. Okay. So don't have to stay perfect. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about the garlic right now, but I will add salt. Okay, I will add my favorite, which is steak spice, but if you don't have steak spice, I say use this regular black pepper. This is the way I do it. You know what? I might throw the garlic in whole. And then I'm going to peel it before I put them in the jar. So I'm just going to put a few garlic heads, garlic cloves. But these won't take long. Uh, so you want to roast them and then I'll show you what to do. It's just another way of preserving some of your tomatoes, believe it or not. You're gonna say, how do you preserve roasted tomatoes? Well, yes, you can preserve them this way. And they'll last a long time. They'll last over a year. And these are just perfect because they're very meaty. These Italian tomatoes are very meaty. They don't have a lot of water, so when they roast, they roast really nice. And it's great because a lot of people can't get you know, tomatoes by the bushel in the winter time. Now you could even put some rosemary now, but I'm gonna add it later on fresh. So I'm not worried about adding all my ingredients. There it is. Like I said, we could even do the black pepper. There we go, it's up to you. So I'm gonna put these in the oven and they'll be ready at the same time. I have one more pan I can use. It's a smaller pan, but it'll work. Focus, for sure. Uh, if you're in Montreal, Provigo had these on special for $9.99, guys. Can't beat that price. Get a whole box. So, if you're in Montreal, go visit your Provigo and get yourself some beautiful Italian tomatoes that you can roast and preserve. For the winter hopefully they last the winter <laughs> oh steak spice JJ there we go simple 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 okay so I'm not even putting oil I'm not even putting oil in here you can if you want I might just squirt some oil on my pan while they're in the oven but the oil will go later. I just don't want to lose all that oil in my pan. So I'm going to add it later. I'm using a cast iron pan. They're really not going to stick. But if you're worried, just a couple of squirts to help them roast. Do that on all your tomatoes and into the oven. So I'll see you in a bit. Thank you, Erica. I'll get out. Okay guys, so I just started. I only made a small batch. I have some over here that I made. And I didn't just make tomato, I made tomato sauce. So uh, my family could just crack one of these open and they'll be ready to throw pasta. You, all you have to do is heat it up. You don't even have to make a spaghetti sauce. It's got um, chanterelle mushrooms, so I was really excited. Then I ran out of big jars, so I had to use some of these smaller jars. But it's nice and cool in my garage. These are nicely sealed. I usually remove the top part of my of my uh, lid. I only leave I only leave the flat part on top once it's sealed, once it's popped in. But um, I have smaller jars for when my husband wants to just have some pasta. He can just take one of these small jars. If he wants to make gnocchi or whatever. And when we have the family, we have the bigger jars. But yeah, I ran out of jars, so we had to pick up some jars yesterday, which was like trying to find gold, guys. Oh, it was like nuts. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I did buy some over here. Sorry, I'll show you. I did buy some beautiful, beautiful large beans 
they were on special so we got some we don't we didn't get as many as we normally would get but you know what a little is better than nothing that's what i say i do have tomatoes in jars and my girl do you hear my dog do you hear him ah, he drives me crazy okay i had a, a whole bunch more but I do have tomato in jars, so I'm okay. I'm going to be okay for the winter with tomato. And if not, well, I'll just have to buy more if I run out, right? That's all I have left of my peppers. I'm telling you, my garage became... <laughs> it became my storage area. Sorry. Yeah, my garage became my storage area. They're a little wrinkly, but they're still good, guys. I could either dehydrate these or maybe tonight I'm going to fry them up, whatever's left here. And make dinner for my husband but yeah it's important to buy in large amounts because I'll tell you something when I do groceries when I buy these peppers and tomatoes like for ten dollars a whole case or nine dollars or seven dollars a case of peppers uh, where are you gonna get peppers at that price nowhere you will never get peppers at that price you will never get tomatoes for nine ninety nine a case where are you gonna get that Come the fall, especially if you don't have a place where you have a garden. Come the fall, you're going to buy like a few tomatoes. It's going to cost you $10. And I got a whole case. So I'm going to preserve them every which way I can. See? Look how beautiful they are. How could you go wrong? These are smaller than the first batch we got. But who cares? They're still going to do what it's going to do for me. But I've used so much of it already. And I still can't make a dent in these boxes. I've got a lot more to make. So I'm hoping that the jars I have left is enough. But, you know, when you, get, when you get tomatoes for this price, you can't go wrong. If you don't want to make anything, all you have to do is throw them in the freezer. Get a plastic bag, dump some of these tomatoes in a plastic bag, and throw them in the freezer. Let me tell you something. Come this winter, if you need one tomato to put in a broth, you pull out one tomato. If you need a whole bunch of tomatoes to make a fast, maybe a pasta arrabbiata with a fast sauce... You take a few of these out. If you want to make a spaghetti sauce, like the spaghetti sauce, spaghetti sauce, you take a whole bunch and throw them in a, a pot and you cook them down. So you could just simply put them in the freezer and you're storing away some tomatoes. Things that you can use over the winter for sure. Because they will get expensive over the winter. You know? Make some beautiful sun-dried tomatoes. I can't even tell you how many tomatoes is in this tiny jar. This is going to be the jar that keeps giving. So, great way to preserve and have things handy when you need it. Okay, so I am going, thank you Erica, I am going to um, roast these tomatoes that I have in the oven. I'm going to show you, I even put a half a tomato that we had left. Watch out JJ. A half a tomato that we had left from this morning's breakfast. You see her? She's sitting on top, but I'm going to roast these and then I'm going to show you how I preserve them. Put this aside. So they took an hour and 15 minutes. There they go. It took me an hour and 15 minutes, but this is the way I like them roasted. Uh, these are going to be perfect. Really nice. Now I will remove the skin off my garlic. And I will use the garlic... Without the skin. Mind you, you could leave the skin if you want. It doesn't matter. You could put that completely in the jar the way it is. Okay, so you want to make sure your jars are dry. So if they're not, just use some clean paper towels to dry the inside. Now, taste them for salt. You could always add salt later, or you could add it now before you put them in the jar. Okay, so I'm just going to... Now, if you don't want to be picking off the skin off your garlic later, this is also good to use once you put them in your jar. So you can still eat that garlic. And if you're going to put it in with the skin, then I'm going to say uh, you'll have to remove it when when you're ready to eat it. So I have some fresh rosemary. I'm just gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna tuck some under in my jar and I'm gonna start adding my tomatoes in. If you want, you can wait till they're cooled off.
There we go. These won't take long to. And see how I like them? I like them nice and charred. Just another way of preserving. The only thing with this is it's got to go in the refrigerator. Now, if there's a little bit of juice like that, that's okay too. Don't worry about it. Just put your tomatoes in. I like to place them in layer after layer. This way, when I'm pulling one out, it's going to be a lot easier for me. Drop in a garlic. Now, if you want, you could also put fresh garlic in here. I know, I'm not really on camera, eh? Here's that half a tomato that we had left this morning from our tomato sandwich. It's going to go in. There we go. And you can see that you can pack a lot in one jar. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just start by adding a little bit of oil. Like I said, if I add only olive oil, I've got the good olive oil, so it's just going to turn into a gel on me. But I like the taste of olive oil, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of sunflower oil. And I like to do it as I'm layering. This way I get no air pockets. And some... Sunflower oil. There we go. We're going to continue adding a beautiful, beautiful roasted tomatoes. See, I'm doing like the squirrels. I'm preparing for the winter, guys. My God, this is something I got to hide from my husband because he's going to sit here with a baguette and he's just going to eat the whole thing. Where I want to keep this when we're making. Um, when we're making a rice dish, we could just put a couple of these on top of our rice and it's just going to be scrumptious. You don't want to squeeze them. I know you're tempted to just kind of push everything in, but you don't want to do that. Like I said, if you leave it with the skin, it's just as good. Okay, so here's one. This is the last one here. Here's my, and notice that I didn't use a lot of oil in my, sorry, uh, I didn't use a lot of oil when I was cooking. All I did was I took my spray that I have, this is pure olive oil, and I just squirted some oil while it was cooking. Uh, so you don't really have to waste oil because you will be adding oil to your jar. Now sometimes we've got to make life easy for us. And you get delicious gourmet stuff to eat. I'm going to put another piece of rosemary in there. I'm so sorry, guys, but you know, we're going to keep this video real, right? JJ! My dog, my guard dog. Okay, so now this one here, I will peel. It's a raw garlic. But what I will do is just hammer it down a bit. And just remove the skin. For you or for me, Eric? Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't want to get garlic on my fingers. Okay. And because the tomatoes are still hot, that garlic is going to kind of cook in there. Okay. So continue adding more tomatoes. Now, like I was saying, uh, when you're jarring tomatoes like this, you do not want to fill it to the top because what's important is when you're preserving this way, you need to leave a space on top so you can add oil to top it off because that's how you're going to preserve them. And these can stay in your fridge for over a year if you want. If you make a lot of it and you keep them in your fridge, you could keep them in there for a long time. So you do need space to top it off. I was able to put a lot in this jar. See, maybe I could even fit the rest in here. So I just want to gently push it in. Oh my lord. 
Ugh, I'm gonna have to edit that off, guys, because I know it's keeping it real, but this is like really keeping it real. He's like just gonna choke on himself. Okay, a little extra olive oil, maybe a little extra salt, and just a little sunflower oil. And let's see if we can push a few more of these in. I want to push them in, but I don't want to overpress them because then we're going to get floaters. We don't want to do that. But I want to be able to put some more in here. Now, a lot of you are going to say, oh my God, all that waste of oil. Well, no, it's not really waste of oil because you could use this. This oil is going to be flavored. You could use this in uh, salad dressings, so you're really not wasting it. See, they sell these things that you could actually put in your jar, eh? It's like a little glass thing that you can, uh, push it in. Maybe I could jam a few more in there. Okay, there we go. Maybe we can do this. Let's see. If not, Erica will eat it with her lunch. Sorry, Erica. Well, maybe one. Maybe she could have one. Okay, a little bit of salt. Okay, now the thing is to keep it topped, guys. If you're using, say you need to take some out of the jar, right? Uh, the whole thing about this is you want to top them off. I'm going to put this in, and that's going to help me push my, there we go, keep my tomatoes down. What you want to do is if you're going to use any of these, you really do have to top them off. That means as you're consuming, you want to make sure that your tomatoes are always under the oil. That's how you're going to preserve these. If you leave your tomatoes floating on top with the air, you might have a problem. You might not, but you might have a problem. So always make sure you top it. And I really did not use a lot of oil in here. It looks like I used a lot, but it's mostly tomato and tomato juices from uh, from uh, its own tomato. So here's another way of preserving. So I, sh I showed you my sun-dried tomatoes, which is almost this system. This way it's faster. You're roasting them. You can put this on any meal that you make. Make a little bit of rice tonight. You take a couple of these tomatoes and you place them on top. So another way to preserve your tomatoes guys you can make some delicious stuff that you could keep in your refrigerator uh, most of you have second refrigerators some of you don't so if you don't make smaller batches and just don't eat them all in one shot just enjoy it while you have it so you just take a little at a time and you enjoy it on a dish it just makes a beautiful gourmet dish you can make a fresh pasta and then just place some tomatoes on top how delicious so maybe the next video I'm gonna show you how I make my sauce what I did was make my life easy uh, because I do have plain tomato so I made mine into a pasta sauce so all I have to do is open up a jar heat it up and dinner is ready sometimes we got to make life easy for us right guys so I hope you like this little video it wasn't really it was just a very simple video on how to preserving some tomatoes and if you like more videos like this I know I've got some hot peppers. If you want, I'll show you how I preserve my hot peppers. I might even have a video on that. But you can do it the same way. You can roast your peppers and then add oil on top. Yes, I think I do have a video like that. Or you can fry them up and then put them in a jar. Top them with oil. And again, as you use it, you top your oil. So that's it. Just make sure it goes under the oil, guys. That's what's important that you get all those little bubbles that's you want to get the bubbles out so when you press it down gently you don't want to over press this right because if you over press it you're going to end up making a big mess and you keep those tomatoes under the oil now i think i could put this one in now so i'm going to put this in upside down there you go beautiful so that's how simple this is guys so i hope you like this video and if you give these a try try not to eat them all in one sitting because that's what you're going to be tempted to do i'm going to roll some more because i have 
four boxes of tomatoes I gotta pack away. I'm gonna make more pasta sauce and more roasted tomatoes because these are faster than the sun-dried. And sun-dried, I could get them at a pretty good price. I just needed to try some myself. My daughter already tasted it. She says, Mommy, they're more delicious than the one at the store. So, but I needed to try the uh, the uh, dehydrated ones myself, and I did so, and I'm happy. So I have a nice jar packed that I can use. I still have the ones that I bought. I'm going to concentrate on making more of these beautiful roasted tomatoes. And remember, you can use this as a topping on any meal you make. And it's going to be just more beautiful and more delicious. And that oil, don't throw it away, guys. Toss a salad with it. Cook something up with it. You can still consume that oil. That oil is not going to get wasted on you. So there you go. Hope you like it. And I'll see you in my next video, guys. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.